Hey, Tingba here with a fresh complete guide on Ting Yun, our favorite fox Jin, or second favorite, or third, or fourth, is definitely the enemy's favorite. Anyway, Ting Yun is obviously insane even in 1.5 and I would like to do a guide on her as I'm doing a guide on every unit. Some people still don't know how to build her, especially with the new relics, as well as how much speed she needs, how much attack, etc. So we will discuss that today, along with a quick kit explanation including cool mechanics that you can abuse, and an Eidolon review, and we will finish by going through every new synergy she has had since her debut in 1.0. So like and sub if this helped, and let's begin. Ting Yun is a 4 star lightning harmony unit and has one of the weakest stat lines in the game, only compensating with her high speed being the second highest just after Zeela. For trace priority you should level her ultimate along with her skill, followed by her talent only if you want a little bit of extra damage, and her basics are unnecessary to level, as the talent is what gives her basics their power. For a very quick kit rundown, her basics are just basics, and her talent improves her basics based on the stats of the ally she buffs with her skill, so the DPS's stats will be used for the damage calculation and they can crit. This only procs once per ally attack, and won't proc multiple times on say a bounce attack. Tingyun's skill will buff the attack of an ally for 3 of their turns, and only one ally at a time, as well as make them have additional attack procs on their attacks just like Tingyun's talent. The buff works based on two limits, the base attack of the ally you are buffing and the total attack of Tingyun. So to maximize her buff, you take the base attack of the DPS you want and times it by the first percentage that her skill states. The base attack is the number on the left of your stats, and is the addition of the unit base attack with the light cone base attack. So for level 10 Tingyun skill, we multiply by 50%, and for level 12, by 55%. This gives us the attack buff that we want, but the amount we get is dependent on Tingyun's total attack. So we divide the number we want by the percentage of total Tingyun attack we need. For level 10 skill this is 25%, for level 12 27% etc. This will give us the total attack we need on Tingyun if we want to max out our attack buff. For level 10 skill you can just simplify this by multiplying your DPS's base attack by 2. For level 12, you multiply the DPS's base attack by about 2.037. If we take the highest base attacks in the game at level 12 skill, this gives us a max attack needed on Ting Yun of 2725. However, maxing out Ting Yun's attack buff is unnecessary and is only a min-max goal for the end game if you are satisfied with your DPS's relics. If we use my Qing Shui sheet on the Battle Pass Light Cone, having an attack of 2000 on Ting Yun at level 10 skill gives us a buff of 500 attack, and gives Qing Shui a 14.5% DPS increase overall. Getting to her max buff, which requires 360 more attack, only gives us an additional 2-3% DPS increase. Thing to note is her skill will snapshot her attack when buffing, so buffing her attack mid-benediction will not increase her attack buff, but if her attack is higher from say a secondary harmony before she buffs her ally, it will increase her attack buff. This is another reason why she doesn't need to max her attack stat. As for Ting Yun's ultimate, she will regenerate energy for the ally you choose and give them a nice large damage percent buff. This energy isn't affected by energy regeneration rate by the way. This ult can be used whenever really, but is ideally not used when the ally is less than a turn away from their ult to not waste an overcap on energy. Finally, her technique will restore 50 energy to herself. This is very useful and should pretty much always be used. She can even use it twice to max her energy before a battle, and if you spam her ultimate key before anyone takes action, she can use it before her go even begins, even if she is the first to act, meaning she can give an ally energy immediately, proc any effects from doing so like dance dance dance, and also gain energy at the start of her turn with her A6 passive. This will also let her kickstart her first ultimate rotation. For Eidolons, her major Eidolon is her E6, and the rest are really just small benefits. Even her E6 won't magically make her 10 times better in some teams. Though, on to the rest. E1 will give a nice speed buff to your DPS, E2 gives that DPS extra energy upon kills now, and E4 buffs the multiplier of the bonus benediction damage procs. It will not be buffing that ultimate damage percent buff by 20%. I see a lot of people risking pity for her Eidolons, but they'll come within due time and E6 is a lot of pulls away. She is amazing at E0 and still remains a needed support for many DPS due to her energy gifting mechanics, skill point generation, ult cycling and buffs. So onto relics. In 1.0 we didn't have much and we're left with Musketeer as her best in slot. These days we have lots of options and whilst Musketeer is still great for her, 
4 hackspace gives her additional utility. There is now also the option of 2 hackspace and a defensive 2 piece, because as we will see, she really needs it. For plain ornaments, she ideally wanted Bonwack for her best rotation, but now we have the Penaconi set, which is just a better Bonwack for farming efficiency and also benefits any lightning DPS in the team. Note that it won't work on the additional damage procs unlike Planetary Rendezvous, since you have to follow the same type as her, which is Lightning. So Vonwack is her best if you want to kickstart her NG cycling and skill point generation, otherwise if you don't want to farm and or have a Lightning DPS, go for the Panaconi set. If you don't care for her 3 turn rotation, then go for Broken Kill or Fleet of the Aegis as usual. Just a note as we'll be talking about it a bunch, but Tingyun 3 turn rotation requires Vonwack or Panaconi, NG Rope, and meshing cogs or memories of the past at S5. For main stats, you want speed boots and an energy rope always. As for chest and orb, you'll want one of them at least to be attack percent and one to be HP percent or def percent if you're struggling. If you have a bunch of HP percent or def percent in subsets, then two attack percent main stats is much better. For a stat goal, you'll want to prioritize getting Tingyun to 3k HP and 1k defense alongside high speed, and then max out her attack buff. Before maxing out her attack buff, a good place to stay at is about 2k to 2.5k attack. 2.5k attack is feasible with a 4 star Lycone and good investment, 2k attack is with a weaker investment and something like meshing cogs. Remember, not dying is more important than attack percent, since no buffs at all, since she's dead, is much worse than weaker buffs. Here are the percentages of stats needed to get these stat goals. Speed isn't included, but since it's so important, you should focus on a good balance of all three sets whilst also going for high speed. For Lycones, as the Mesh and Cogs profit, there's nothing better than that 8 energy, and Memories of the Past at S5 works the same for what we need, and has much better base stats for those annoying stat requirements. Here are the substat differences you need for Cogs versus Memories to reach some stat goals. Bronnie's Lycone, Dance Dance Dance, Carve the Moon, Planetary Rendezvous with a Lightning DPS are all great options on her of course, but I really enjoy the 3 turn rotation. Of course it changes depending on what you want from her, and the 3 turn ultimate Tingyun isn't necessarily needed. Now onto an important topic, her speed and how she benefits any DPS in the game. For Tingyun's speed you either go whatever you want and make her super fast or you start min maxing. On a 3 turn rotation Tingyun you can benefit a 4 turn rotation DPS every rotation of theirs, provided you are faster than them by even 1 speed. You use Tingyun ult on their turn before they take action, then they can skill or basic as usual into their ultimate. This will permanently shorten their rotation, which is major. A 4 turn rotation Tingyun will not be able to benefit every rotation of a 4 turn rotation DPS, since the DPS's second ult will cycle too quickly. This can be saved by Tingyun being super fast, which is about 180 if the DPS is at 134 speed. This is again why I prefer the glory of 3 turn Tingyun. If the DPS is on a 3 turn rotation before Tingyun somehow, you will help out with the ultimate every other rotation, since unless she's super fast as we will see in a bit, their next ultimate will be boosted forward, and you'd have to take 3 turns in the same time they take 2. That brings us on to the next rotation, the 3 turn rotation Tingyun combined with very high speed. The idea is to take 3 Tingyun turns in the same time our DPS takes 2. This is usually better at E6 but works at E02. Tingyun's 50 to 60 energy doesn't just compensate for one DPS action, it can compensate for two DPS actions worth of energy, meaning instead of having a 4 turn rotation on a DPS, we could have a 2 turn one, which if you don't realize, is absolutely crazy. Now taking 3 turns in the same time a unit takes 2 is very difficult, and this is only really feasible with a slow DPS like a slow Lune. On 134 speed DPS, you'd need about 201 speed and this is before considering her A2 and E1, which will make Tingyun's speed requirement higher by a little bit. So to take 3 Tingyun turns in the same time your DPS takes 2, here is a chart, and all the specific values are in my very messy spreadsheet linked below. Again, it's very easy on slow DPS. If you consider A2 and E1 together, it gets a little bit higher as seen in this chart. Remember, you can be slower than this ideal speed, this is way too high for some speeds, and still help out your DPS greatly. You'll still be super fast and cycle your ultimate quickly, and that ultimate energy can speed up their following rotation regardless. So onto synergies, and as usual during these update videos, we go through each new unit since the guide unit's release and see how the two synergize with each other. 
Silverwolf in 1.1 can use Ting Yun in mono lightning compositions, fulfilling that harmony role, and can also use her in mono quantum versus lightning weak enemies to ensure quantum weakness while still providing massive buffs to the main DPS. Unlike full mono quantum, that has too much sustain or too quantum DPS. The Watcher doesn't gain any new bonus with Ting Yun, and Yukong was a nice addition, so Ting Yun no longer takes 100% of the aggro, now only 50% with the fellow Foxing in the same team. 1.2 saw Blade join the team, he can't use her attack percent buff very well, but in a dual team, the energy and damage percent buff is nice, and Ting Yun can buff the other DPS. Kafka was also introduced, and Ting Yun's energy complements her very well, and she works with every buff of Ting Yun's, abusing the additional damage procs with her high speed and variety of attacks. You can enable some super short rotations with Kafka, and alongside Huo Huo, some crazy things can happen. Again, there's mono lightning possibilities with Kafka and Ting Yun, alongside a Silver Wolf and Bailu. 1.3 brought along in Baibata Lune, who, like every DPS, loves Ting Yun's energy, and her energy can even replace the signature light cone's benefits, making Eon S5 a bit closer in power to his signature. A Lune at base speed can ult every two turns, with a Ting Yun at 153 speed at least. Of course, E2 Lune will break this since he will go again, but Ting Yun just enables E2 to go even more times. 1.4 introduced Jing Liu and Topaz as two great DPS, and it's getting a bit repetitive since Ting Yun is so good and NG is so good. Jing Liu especially can use Ting Yun very well since her damage is locked to her spectral state, and the only way to extend said state is to get to Jing Liu ultimate off mid spectral state. Ting Yun can do this by timing your Ting Yun energy specifically and rotating fast enough to enable Jing Liu to always ult during her spectral state, and sometimes even twice if you're crazy enough, for 3 to 4 enhanced attacks every state. Topaz of course enjoys the energy for a very high enhanced Numbi uptime, and she can abuse the additional damage procs with all of her Numbi attacks. Finally, 1.5 brought Huo Huo as another energy battery unit, and the two work so well together since Huo Huo funnels energy into Ting Yun, that then funnels energy into any DPS. Argenti is the DPS of 1.5 and his damage is centered around his massive ultimate nukes, so you can kinda guess how that goes. Ting Yun heavily compensates for his weak energy gains in single target, and in multiple target setups, she can permanently reduce his rotation by one turn. So I hope this guy helped fix up your Ting Yun, and thanks to all my amazing YouTube members, thanks for watching, and have a go with